I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I want to welcome you to today's Cisco certification video. Today's video is an EIGRP video quiz. I'm going to have the questions on the whiteboard. Some will have choices, some will not. And as with all, all of my video pop quizzes, we're going to go through the questions a little quickly. So if you need a few extra seconds, feel free to pause the video because I do want a few minutes at the end of this video to go over the answers with you as well. We're going to start off with a question about the EIGRP successor routes. In which EIGRP tables can we find that particular kind of route? Now for your exams, of course, you want to know what a successor route is, but you also, for the exam and the real world, need to know where you can find them. So we've got four choices there for where we can find the successor route. And here's the same list of choices, but now we need to know where we can find the feasible successor routes. And again, I'm not limiting you to a number of choices here. I'm not telling you how many are right. So our first two questions there are about the successor and feasible successor routes. Very short answer, very short answer. What routing algorithm does EIGRP use? What routing algorithm does EIGRP use? Very basic question there. Another pretty basic one here for you. What is the default administrative distance of a native EIGRP route? Got to know those administrative distances cold. So we need to know what the default AD of a native EIGRP route is. A couple of choices here for you on this one. If you redistribute a route into EIGRP, what routing table codes should you expect to see next to that route? Should we see EEX, just EX, DEX, or D? What routing table code should we expect to see next to a route redistributed into EIGRP? Next question, what default AD is assigned to a route such as the one we just talked about? What is the default AD of a route that is learned by EIGRP via redistribution? Of these particular EIGRP route states, passive, active, calculated, and standard, which of these indicates a route that is currently open for data transfer? In other words, putting it simpler, it's an available path. Passive, active, calculated, or standard? Next question, which of these four values are considered by default by EIGRP during the route calculation process. Which of these four are considered by default? Let's take a look at the next question. What is the default value of the variance command? You should know what the variance command does, but we also need to know what the default value of that command is. It's not tricky, but it's sometimes misunderstood. What is the default value of the variance command? And finally, we've got a, uh, a video question for you, if, if you will. This isn't on the whiteboard, but just take a quick look at this illustration. And let's assume that we're running EIGRP over this particular network. We have a potential issue here. What is it? What can we do about it as far as EIGRP goes? What command will help us get around this potential issue? And finally, and more importantly, where do we need to configure this command? We forget that sometimes when we're learning new commands. We need to know where to configure it. So where would we configure that? We'll discuss that in just a few minutes. We're going to go back to the first question now and go over the answers. And let's start with our first one here, the successor routes can actually be found in two EIGRP tables. They can be found in the EIGRP route table and the topology table. The successor routes are the best routes. So again, you're going to see those in your EIGRP routing table and your topology table. The feasible successors are our backup routes, if you will, which EIGRP calculates in advance. Now we like that 
because it helps if we lose our successor routes that we have these feasible successors really standing by. The feasible successors are found only in the topology table. They're not going to be found in the routing table. There is no official EIGRP database table, by the way. I threw that one in because our three EIGRP tables are topology, route, and neighbor. EIGRP uses dual as its routing algorithm. The default administrative distance of a native EIGRP route is 90, and that is as opposed to one learned by redistribution, which we're going to go over here in just a moment. But the default AD of a native EIGRP route is 90. When you redistribute a code into EIGRP, you should expect to see the code DEX next to that route because when it's learned by redistribution it's an external route so you're going to see that EX there and also remember the routing code table excuse me the routing table code for EIGRP is D it is not E E is for EGP which was here first that's why it uh, that's why it works that way it's a little strange but remember your basic routing code for EIGRP is simply D but for an external route it's going to be DEX and the default administrative distance for that is 170. So our internal or native EIGRP routes are going to have a default AD of 90, the external routes an AD of 170. The route state we actually want here is passive. Calculated in standard or red herrings, they're not actually EIGRP route states. Our EIGRP routes are either going to be active or passive, and it would sound like we would want active, right? I mean, that sounds great. But it's actually not what we want because an active route is currently being calculated by dual and it's not open to carry data. But a passive route is not currently being calculated and therefore it is available. The metric weights here that are set by default to 1 and that are considered by EIGRP are bandwidth and delay. Bandwidth and delay. Load and reliability are both set to 0. The default value of the variance command is actually 1, and that in effect enables EIGRP equal cost load balancing. I'll have a video for you in the future, near future, it'll show you an EIGRP variance lab, and you can actually see this command in action, but the default value is actually 1. It's when you change that to 2 or something higher that you are enabling EIGRP unequal cost load sharing. Then finally, we had a question here, and I gave you kind of a clue here in the name of the file. If you can see that, it's auto-summarization. The issue here is auto-summarization. EIGRP performs auto-summarization by default. And in a nutshell, in, an, in a network where you have discontiguous subnets, which is what we have here, we have a couple of subnets of the major network number 20000 over on one part of the network, and we've got a couple of others here on another part of the network. Anytime you see that, You've got to be careful of EIGRP's default behavior of auto-summarization. In this case, you would want to use the no auto-summary command, and you would only need it on routers 2 and 3. That's where you'd have to have it. It wouldn't hurt anything to put it on 1, but remember the routes are being summarized as they're being sent, not as they're being received. So where we need to configure no auto-summary is right here on router 2 and on router 3. We're hitting the YouTube time limit here, so I'm going to go ahead and conclude here. Also want to invite you out to the website, www.thebryantadvantage.com. I have over 250 free Cisco certification tutorials now, fully illustrated, plus videos, plus practice exams, all kinds of other goodies too. So come on out to the website. Hope you enjoy this quick quiz. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you on the website.